Hello everyone, I'm Jade Nardi and I'm going to talk about interactive oracle proof of proximity to algebraic geometric codes. So this is a joint work with Sarah Bordage, Mathieu Lotel and Hugues Randriam. If you are not familiar with all the all the terms in the title, do not worry, I will make sure to clarify all of them. So first some context. So the context is computational integrity. So imagine that uh a computer run a computation for a smartphone, for instance. So the computer is much powerful, much more powerful than the smartphone. And the computer runs a computation f on an input x, and it claims that y is the result. But it also sends a short proof of this result. And the smartphone, which is here the verifier, has to validate or not, has to validate or not the um, the computation from the proven. And in this context, we need two uh, properties. First, completeness. The verifier always accepts valid proof of correct statements. And we also want soundness, which is, so the prover, even if it cheats, it cannot produce convincing proofs for false statements. But how can we construct such proof for any computation? One option is to encode the computation. And this has been used 30 years ago for the famous PCP theorem. So PCP here stands for probabilistically checkable proof. And today it's widely used in industrial in industry, for instance, in blockchains. So what about codes? Here I will give you a quite um unusual point of view of code, which is a functional point of view. So in this talk, a code of a finite field f will be a vector space of functions from L to f for domain L. The length of the code will be the cardinality of L, and the rate of the code will be the ratio of the dimension by uh, the length of the code. And we endow the code with a distance. So the relative distance, distance between two functions f and g is defined like this. It's a number of elements in the domain at which the function differ divided by the size of the domain. So one uh, famous example of linear code is Ritz-Solomon code. So Ritz-Solomon code, you take a domain L which is just a subset of your finite field and you consider a function from L to F which coincide with univariate polynomial of degree less than Z. And this gives you a code of dimension D. And finally, we will need the notion of delta phi. So a function F is said to be delta phi from code C if it is a distance at least delta from any element of C. Okay, so now, now we have dealt with, uh, with codes, now proximity testing. So the problem is you, we have an actual uh, computational integrity language. We, we have some instance and we want to know if uh, they lie in the language or not. And to do this, we use arithmetization. I will not explain how arithmetization works, but it encodes the, um, the running of uh, the computation. And this arithmetization transforms the fact that Y is indeed the right result into a code worth or a code word of a given code C. And if Y is not the right result, then this other arithmetization process will uh, construct a word F which is far from C. And this is why we are led to run proximity tests for a code C. So what is a proximity test? So the game is given a code C and an oracle access to F, to a function. We want to check whether the function is in the code or is delta far from the code. So we cannot uh, say anything about function in the gray area, but we want to distinguish between the case where F is in the code or far from the code. And to make sublinear proximity tests for non-locally testable codes, we need two ingredients. We will use two ingredients, which are randomness and interaction. And to do this, we place ourselves in the uh, interactive oracle proof model. 
So in, in interactive local proof model, we have the verifier and the prover, and they have kind of a conversation. First, we have the input F, and the verifier sends a challenge Z0 to the prover, to which it answers by a new function F1. And this function can be accessed by the verifier by Oracle Access, and so on. The verifier sends another challenge, and the prover answers by a function. Okay, so we have kind of this conversation and interactive oracle proof are information theory proof system. And so here we, um, we will design interactive oracle proof of proximity for code C with soundness error S. So this is a function from 0, 1 to 0, 1. And we want two properties, once again, completeness, which means that if the input is indeed in the code C, we want some, pr some behavior of the prover that will make the verifier accept with probability 1. And we want also soundness, which means that if f is delta far from the code, then for all prover, any unbounded prover, no, no assumption about the, um, the computational power of the prover, he cannot be able to uh, convince the verifier except with a small probability which is uh, designed by this soundness error function. So at each step, the, ver the prover has to, uh, to make access, to, to give the verifier access to some function fi, and in reality, it's instantiated by commitments using Merkle trees. And if you are not happy with interaction, uh, I can tell you that if the verifier uses public coin randomness, then you can remove the interaction via a fiat shamir like transform. Now, the last notion that you may not know is about algebraic geometry codes. So algebraic geometry codes generalizes Ritz-Solomon codes. In the Ritz-Solomon code, you take L as a sub a subset of your finite field, and you consider functions which are just univariate polynomial of bounded degree. To generalize this, you can see this set of points are the set of points uh, in the projective line. And if you want to take another curve, you can take another curve x over f. And in a, for the domain, you take n points with coordinate in f, p1 to pn. And then an algebraic geometry code would just be the set of functions from P to F for F running in some uh, vector space or function on the curve. But to mimic this, um, to, to make F meaningful, like of bounded degree, you know, as in the ritz solomon code, we need a new uh, notion, which is the notion of divisor on a curve. Div a divisor on a curve is a former sum of points, writing a written like this, it's the sum of n, p, p. So you can just see at the set of points, and each point has uh, an associated coefficient, an integer coefficient. And the support of the divisor will be the set of points which actually appear in this decomposition. And instead of taking just a random vector space, we take the riemann rao space associated to a divisor. So it's a set of function so that the valuation is larger than minus np for every p. And we also add the zero function. The valuation of a function, if it is positive, it, it is the vanishing order at the function at p. And if it is negative, minus this value is the pull, off, uh, the pull order of f at p. And for instance, if you take d as um, m times q, then the riemann rao space is just a set of function with pole order at most m at q. So the, uh, rim, an algebraic geometry code will be this kind of thing. So instead of taking just f, you take a riemann rao space associated to d. And to make everything work uh, nicely, you suppose that the support is disjoint from the evaluation set. And these codes generalizes ritz solomon code. So if you take d minus 1 times q for q a good point on the projective line, then you just get a ritz solomon code. Okay, so now we have defined all the notion. So what do we do in this work? We provide an uh, interactive oracle proof of proximity for two explicit families of AG codes, namely on q curves and on the Hermitian tower. These are on small alphabets with a fast prover and a polylogarithmic verifier. 
And you can argue that maybe the algorithm will be kind of galactic, but no, we only perform uh, univariate polynomial interpolations. So how do we do this? We take inspiration from the Fry protocol introduced by Bentov, Ben Sasson, uh, Oryez and Rabziev in 2018, which is an IOPP for reed solomon code. So I remember that reed solomon code is just a function which coincides with unified polynomial of degree, of bounded degree. And so uh, in their case, they suppose that the domain is kind of structure, so it has to be a subgroup, an additive or multiplicative subgroup of the field. And from this, they construct a linear prover, a logger with and a proof with logarithmic query complexity and also logarithmic verification. And all the complexities here will be counted in field operations. So why should we have a look on proximity tests to AG codes? Because the Fry protocol is widely used. It's really, it, it really underlies practical snacks construction. So it's state-of-the-art uh, proximity code, proximity tests to code. So what are the lim but there are some limitations of reed solomon codes. For instance, you have to do to take a field which is larger than your code length. And we also need a structure field because as I just said before, the domain has to be structure. And here we require some groups with large smooth order. But in AG codes, we can work on smaller fields. Since a curve may have more points than just Q, we can have codes which are longer than the, um, the size field. The field of the, yeah, the size field. <laughs> and then um, it will lower the cost of field operation. And we believe that it can make arithmetization more efficient. And also, we do not have uh, many hypothesis on the on the um, on the field so we have more flexibility so maybe if you don't know anything about ag codes you may argue that you work with abstract notion and so maybe it's really hard to encode this uh, with this kind of codes but yeah it's true in general but there are explicit families of ag codes with quasi linear time encoding algorithm and we focus on them in our case so I've just talked about Kumer curves and emission towers, which are uh, these guys. So Kumer curves are plane curves with this equation. So it's just f of x is equal to y to n, where f is separable. So when you uh, look at the, the, the polynomial in an algebraic closure, it just have simple roots. And the degree of this polynomial must be co-prime with the power of y here. And also y is co-prime with the characteristic, the field size. And we have also codes from the Hermitian tower. So the Hermitian tower is an infinite sequence of curves, which is defined recursively thanks to this function, f of x and y is equal to y to q plus y minus x to q plus one. And it's defined over fq squared this time. And so the first curve, so it's defined recursively, the first curve is just P1, and we denote by X1 its coordinate. And then the second curve has two coordinates, X1 and X2, and satisfying the equation here. So F of X1 and X2 is equal to zero. And then you iterate this at each time you add a variable and we add the, um, the dependence thanks to f. So xi is just the curve defined by f of x1, x2 is equal to f of x2, x3 and so on to uh, f of xi minus 1, xi is equal to 0. So it's kind of, maybe you see that as, as abstract because there are plenty of equations but all can be made really explicit. So what is the the aim of our work, then we are able to reduce the proximity testing to AG code on this kind of curves to proximity test to read Solomon code. So let's compare ourselves with the Fry protocol. And the Fry protocol is really efficient because the proof is strictly uh, as is strictly uh, smaller than the input. And here the n is the length of the code. The RAND complexity is logarithmic, the query complexity also, the prover complexity is linear, and the verifier complexity is logarithmic. But the alphabet has to be larger than the, la the length of the code. 
Here, on Kummer curves, you see that we obtain exactly the same complexity, but the alphabet size is now a small o of n. And in the Hermitian tower, we have an alphabet size even smaller because it's just a polylogarithmic in n, but we have to pay some price. The query complexity is also polylogarithmic and the verifier complexity is also polylogarithmic. And the prover complexity is, n is no linear anymore, it's quasi-linear. We have some log and polylog arising here. And all the constants here can be uh, made explicit because they come from univariate polynomial interpolation with small degree. Okay, so what is the ID? Uh, let me remove my camera. So what is the ID of the Fry protocol? The main ID that we want to mimic in the AG uh, context is to recursively half the size of the problem via random folding. So imagine that you take a domain which is just a multiplicative subgroup of order 2 to the n. Then the map pi, which is x to x squared, is 2 to 1 from L to its image. And our aim, our aim here is to uh, uh, turn the proximity test to a ritz solomon code like this, to another ritz solomon code on, with domain pi of L and with dimension z over 2. So pi of L has half the size of L, so these problems should be easier than this one. Okay, so how do we do this? If you take a function f from L to f, then you can interpolate this function by a polynomial and uh, split this polynomial into its even and odd part, right, writing like this, g0 of x squared plus xg1 of x squared. And you see that this polynomial g0 and g1 has degree half the degree of f for any degree uh, for any degree of f um, in the beginning. And then we perform a folding. So for any z, you can define the fold of f in z as a function from pi of l to f, defined like this, just the linear combination of g0 and g1, depending on z here. So you can see the fold as a function that take a long function, an operator which takes a long function, and given a z, it turns this long function into a smaller function. And all these folding operators are really nice, because here we want to test the proximity of f to a ritz solomon code, and instead of doing this, we will test the proximity of the fold to this other ritz solomon code. And to be sure that everything works well, we need three proper properties. We need what we call completeness, which means that if f is indeed in the first ritz solomon code, then its folding will all be in the, um, in the second ritz solomon code for every z. We also require local computability. So it means that we are able to compute one entry of the fold thanks to few entries of the previous function. And here the few is just two. And it's easy to see that here because if you take y in pi of l, it has exactly two pre-images, let's say x and minus x, and we are able to compute the value of g0 and g1 at y thanks to the value of f at x and minus x. It's just basic linear algebra. And then the last property that we will need, and it's by far the most tricky to, to prove, is distance preservation. If f is delta far from the first ritz solomon code, then with high probability over z, the fold of uh, f at z will stay far from the second ritz solomon codes. And delta prime here is roughly delta. And we have proved with some of my co-authors that once you have folding operator, which fulfills completeness, local computability, and distance preservation, then we are able to design proximity uh, IOPP for a code. So you take a code C0, you can, if you are able to construct a sequence of codes with this kind of operators, then we, you have an IOPP for the code C0. And it really mimics the IOPP for uh, Reed Solomon code, which is the Fry. So let me give you an insight of how it works. So we have 
our code, our input function, and the verifier sends a challenge z0 to the prover. And if the prover is honest, it will compute f1 as the fold of f0 at z0 and sends f1. And so on, the verifier sends a new challenge, and the, ver and the prover is supposed to compute the, the folding of the previous function. And they do this until f is just supposed to be a constant. So for the verifier, it will be really easy to, uh, to check if f is just a constant. But the verifier does not trust the prover. And to be sure that f1 is indeed the fold of f0 at z0, you, we use local computability. We check if everything is consistent. So the verifier check this, and, it, and here it just perform a univariate interpolation. And then it just tests if the last function is indeed, fun is indeed constant. So this IOPP is complete because if the function is in the first read Solomon codes, then if the prover is honest, the verifier will accept its proof. And it's also sound, which means if delta is small enough, then the probability of um, if delta is smaller than a given delta zero, the probability of accept by the verifier, where L, when f is delta far is kind of small but not so small, it's just 1 minus delta. And if we want to make this smaller, then we will repeat these uh, consistency checks t times and it, it makes a rise a t here to reach the right complexity. Okay, so how? what is the kind of uh, codes that we look at? So it's ag codes and to make uh, an IOPP we need several ingredients. We need a sequence of code. So we need a sequence of curves and these curves will come from a cyclic action. So we assume that on the first curve x0 on which we consider our code there is a cyclic action by a uh, group gamma0 and we construct a, sequen uh, a second curve x1 as a quotient and so on. We assume that we have a cyclic action on x1 by a uh, group gamma1 and this forms uh, a sequence of curves. We need also a sequence of evaluation points and we just uh, take them as the consecutive images by the projection. And we also assume that we have exactly the right number of pre-images for each point as before. And we also need a sequence of divisor, which are really nice. So enabling both decomposition as in the odd and even part for polynomial and which gives a folding operator, which preserves uh, distance to the code. And from this, we, are, we get sequence of AG codes with decreasing, decreasing length and dimension, and each code supports a family of folding operator, which gives us um, um, an IOPP for this code. So as a conclusion, we have for two explicit families of AG codes, which are encodable easily, and which has co which have constant rate, constant distance, and small alphabet, we are able to construct IOPPs, which are fast to generate and exponential exponentially faster to verify. So this concludes my presentation, and I thank you for your attention.